Not my monkeys. Not my circus. Uh, that is an analogy for all the motorsport racing. Uh, <laughs> what's funny is there's like, we all know that the economy and everything, it, we're, we're going through a transition period where there's a big gap between kind of the middle class to the wealthy and um, both sides, whether it's left or right, everybody is not that happy. Well, in motorcycle racing, all the sanctioning bodies are happy, but yet the riders are now starting to speak out about damn time <laughs> that they're not that happy, right? The sanctioning bodies, Feld, MX Sports, um, FIM, AMA, the riders are worried about A, money, and safety. But again, the guys that own the circus, they've set in place rules and have done this for so long that everyone has gotten used to this is just how it is if you want to be part of the circus you know you've got to be one of the monkeys and you just gotta go with the flow but i commend jeffrey hurlings for speaking out because he is somebody in the sport that people will actually listen to because of just the clout that he has and same thing with jace jace has a huge platform where millions of people uh view his his podcast and his videos, you know, so he's in a position to influence potentially what might be said. I'm a, a small activist, but I, I do know that it's, it's a very small part of the equation. We're talking like less than 1%, you know, uh, but the, the point is, is try to get the community going to understand that, Hey, people are wanting to change. And I talk a, a shit ton about safety and that the riders don't want to ride anymore. You look here. Let, let, let's just listen to Hurlings. As an athlete, um, I, I would like to say many more things, but for me, that whole freaking Saturday need to be gone. You seen Thomas Kier Olsen? He's in freaking coma because that qualifying heat. Now, Maxime Renault, he broke four vertebras because that qualifying heat. Why take that extra risk on a Saturday? It means for nothing. Either just do like. So <laughs> he's talking about safety, right? And it's the reason why the riders don't like the Triple Crown Series in Supercross because they spend literally almost 100%, you know, double the time on the track. And I made a video uh, a few weeks ago about like potentially going to three motos. Yeah, there's some implications there because you've got another gate drop and the gate drops are potentially some of the most dangerous part of the the race itself. But, you know... Um, I guess if you want to look on a, a, a timeline, you know, when you have the race is 30 minutes long and the start is such a small percentage, you know, because it, it takes 30 seconds to finish the start that relatively you could argue that the rest of the race is more dangerous. But these riders are riding at 150 percent or more for a long duration. These guys are, are racing here in America, supercross and motocross like they don't get a break right? The season is long, the races are long, and it's difficult to keep following. Same thing what Hurlings is saying with, hey, why do we have a Saturday qualifying session? Like it's, why? Why, 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 why? I mean, there's only 15 guys that show up on the gate anyway, and there's very few of them that are actually being paid by the teams. So they're like risk versus reward. This is stupid. And this is one of the riskiest sports with the least amount of reward. I mean, look at something like golf, where golf, they are going from the PGA Tour to the, the Saudi Tour because it's you're, you're making more money. They can literally pay you more. And so they're being a little greedy, but they're going, yeah, if you're going to pay me more, boom. What's happening with the World Supercross? We don't know entirely what's going to happen, so we can be... Um, you know, I, I can be skeptical about it, but this is pointing in that direction. Okay, you've got riders like Tomac, uh, Marvin, um, gosh, Webb, that all want to do Supercross only deals. There's a lot of guys. Yeah, you could argue that, you know, McGrath started with Supercross only, but he was like one of the top guys, like just one guy of the field that was like, oh, I'm just going to race Supercross, you know? And then Stewart said, oh, I'm, I'm just going to race Supercross one year. Like, that's okay. But when you have some of the top 10 guys doing that, it's a problem. And this is, again, where we're going with that innovation, 
where you need to keep innovating. And in that podcast, Jace and Hurlings talk about like uh, the world supreme F1, how they're changing rules every three years. And that's how the world supercross is kind of based upon something that's actually been proven to work, right? So again, if you don't innovate, you get left behind. And there's so much with the sport becoming more risky that we need to change it. Whether it's wooden stakes on the track or just the the track itself because the MXGP guys are doing more than the the moto guys when it comes to protesting because they said, no, we're not racing here in France. I made a small little video about it. We're not racing France because it's too dangerous. you know. And, and yeah, there was a lot of comments that I read that were, like, oh, this is motocross. These are man's man. And, uh, you know, show a little bit of mud. Like, come on. But coming from their point of view, they're like, hey, I've got a family. Here's all the risks that line up. Uh, I'm getting paid to race. My contract has to be fulfilled if I'm to finish the season. You know, who knows what kind of they have on the line. But for a qualifying race, they, hell yeah, they would rather line up 25th without the qualifier and race the thing that actually matters than not really the qualifier. Like the risk versus reward just isn't there. You know, see, I'm, I'm coming from an analytical kind of a, a, a trading, you know, money perspective. Like you don't do it if it doesn't make sense. And a lot of this stuff doesn't make sense. We need to innovate. The sport is way more risky. The bikes are way faster. Um, the tracks are way gnarlier. The riders are even more talented. And so the injuries are worse. Like, it's not worth it to do a qualifying race and get paralyzed. Like, uh, da, 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 da. same reason, again, I'm digressing and repeating myself that the riders don't like the Triple Crown Series, right? And it, it's hard to sell this sport to make more money when it's so long. Like, could there potentially be a way to move this stuff to pay-per-view? You know, I, I like what the Monster Cup did. They were changing stuff with the Joker Lane, you know, the Million Dollar Deal. Like, they were changing it up. They were mixing it up. They were making progression in the sport rather than just letting it leave stagnant. Like, small little changes here and there don't mean. Like, it's really the monkeys. Yeah, I'm calling them monkeys. You know, maybe it's a little disrespectful, but I, I guess in any sport, you know, NFL, uh, you know, PGA Tour, whatever, they're all monkeys, right? Because of the, you can use the analogy of this, whatever. It's it's semantics, right? The privateers, the factory riders, they're the ones in control of how to make a change. And I guarantee you, if we've got factory riders like Hurlings saying how bullshit this is, how many hundreds of privateers that have their pro license say that this is entirely bullshit because they're the ones at the bottom of the barrel not making damn anything. They're, the gap between privateer and factory rider when it comes to wages is ridiculous. Most of the privateers that I talk about that even get inside the top 10, top 20 at Nationals and Supercross, they're like, cool, I, I, I broke even. I broke even, maybe made a little bit of money, maybe, but making a small amount of money versus the risk that you're taking is a giant ass problem, right? This is a, a, a cultural problem in the sport of motorcycle racing, and how do you change it? Yeah, money would change it, right? But the question is, is how do you get more money to the sport? Well, there, there's that saying. You know, you, you do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. It's the definition of insanity. You've got to mix it up because something is going to stick. Like we live on something on social media where, you know, this post might get this amount, this might get this amount of views, and then boom, something goes viral, right? We need that change in the sport to go viral. And without having more things out there that are thrown on the wall, like it, it's considered a, a confident rider versus a non-confident rider. A confident rider is going to change his lines behind somebody. He's going to constantly be taking different lines to find that way around the dude because he knows, hey, okay, I lost a second here. That, that didn't work. So now he knows I'm not going to take that inside line the next lap. I'm going to try something else because eventually what he tries gets around that rider. The not so confident rider falls in line and just does the blue groove right behind him and is never going to progress, never going to pass the rider. That's what the sport needs to do is the innovation. 
And we all talk about this constantly about ideas. And it's really effing cool to see some of the top writers kind of getting involved, right? Power to Jace, power to Hurlings. Let me know in the comments below. Keep it WFO, guys. WFO. <laughs>